With all the new ROM hacks coming out, we often forget about the ROM hacks of the old days, and Drano's Blaze Black is a classic. I wanted to revisit this game, and after playing it, I think that it's the easiest difficulty ROM hack for beginners to play, and I'm here to show it. So this is my replay through Pokemon Blaze Black. The first thing to note is that this game is rather unchanged, and this makes your life so much easier. Other than a few evolution changes and type changes that make sense, you don't have to keep track of anything. Not every Pokemon has a change to its base stats or abilities, and this makes many of the fights much easier to navigate. I chose Tepic as my starter, and I pick up a Lillipup on Route 1. Both of them are solid Pokemon with early evolutions that'll carry me in the early game. Immediately in Aspersia Town, I run into Team Plasma and our rival N. They're gonna pop up sporadically throughout this run, but at the end of Route 2 is a first hard rival fight. This fight might catch some players off guard. Bianca has a Meowth with Technician, which can surprise you with big bursts of damage. But as long as you level your Pokemon correctly, you'll survive against this fight no problem. Charon is the next to fight you in the Trainer School. His starter Pokemon is good against yours, so make sure you beat it with the other Pokemon you picked up along the routes. The gym leader I get to face is Crest with his gang of water starters. I opt to pick up the Pansage and Dream Yard because I can cheese this Crest fight. Normally Crest is super hard since he has a full team of 6, while you don't even have a full team yet, but by pre-damaging Pansage into Overgrow, I can sweep his whole team with grass moves. Pre-burned, uh, pre-damaged my Pansage into Overgrow, so that Magical Leaf just kills everything. It just straight up kills everything. There are some Pokemon with like Aqua Jets and Fake Out, but they should never go for it because it doesn't see a kill. And they can pour two, always dies. Alright. That's fine, that's fine. Wellspring Cave is a tag battle against Team Plasma, and the reward is a fishing rod that I can use to fish back in Stryton City. That was quick. Okay! Okay! We'll take that. Oh, I'm not healed. Shit. Drizzle? Damn. Okay, no regenerator, but still. I highly suggest that you pick up a Dark Grass Encounter on Route 3. Not only does this give you a better chance to pick your encounters, but the Pokemon are simply better. Okay. Let's not see Sap Sipper. Okay. So and hits us up with another rival fight down in Nacreen City. He leads a double battle against Drillbur and Bronzor. My Butterfree leads the fight by putting the Pokemon to sleep while Herdier does damage to knock out the Pokemon. Before entering the gym in Nacreen, it's important that I head down to the outside of Pinwheel Forest for some type advantage. Throw. No, I wanted to sock. Lenora is going to be a tough double battle. All of her Pokemon can use Stab Retaliate, and she leads with two Intimidate Pokemon. The game forces you to start on the back foot, but luckily for me, Butterfree can keep her Pokemon asleep while Throw hits massive Vital Throws. So the Herdier is very likely to just Helping Hand all the time, which benefits us. Okay, that's nice. Eventually, I reach the Bufalant that the can't Bufalant, be put to sleep due to Sap Zipper, uh, and here's where I have to take some risk and bank on Herder staying asleep. We can't put a little air cutter. I will take the free turn. Aerial Ace. That's fine. Thankfully, it doesn't bite me in the ass, and I can knock out the Bufalant. As our Ace Watchdog comes out, Herdier wakes up, which means that we have to deal with two Pokemon awake. Looking at their movesets, here's where I have to make a prediction. Herdier is likely to Helping Hand, but it could also attack. I swapped a Bronzer who's a lot better at taking hits, and Vital Throw feints the watch off. I send my Herdier to Intimidate, but they crit a Retaliate to knock out my Herdier. Mhm. Mm Shit. Wow. Oh my god. Just had to take one on the way out. Team Plasma takes us on a goose chase through Pinwheel Forest for a Dragon Skull, so it's up to us to track him down and retrieve the stolen item. A lot of the trainers in the forest have strong Bug and Grass Mons, so make sure to bring a Fire or Flying type to get past them. Castellia City has a lot to offer, useful items like Eviolite, but also another encounter out on Route 4. Okay, I'll take this. You can also find some fossils in the small area of Route 4 that you can't explore. This gives me an Argent half for Berg. Um... Butterfree outspeeds everything on his team except for Scolipede, which is going to be guaranteed to come out next. 
should go for Berg also leads with double intimidate. I lead with my throw on the left to bait resisted attacks into Archon. At the same time, I can put Masquerain to sleep. This lets me set up a Tailwind to boost my speed and kill Vespiquen with acrobatics. Killing the Vespiquen now, setting up Tailwind. Okay. From this point on, the task is simple. Sleep Powder the Awake Pokemon that comes in, and Acrobatics okay. to kill the other side. Beauty. This is the generation we can Sleep Powder, Lee Vanny. The thought just came to me. I, I, it, uh, it just slipped my mind. But we can actually Sleep Powder in this generation. Okay, and then we can pluck the Lee Vanny for health back. Okay. Dude, Butterfree's too OP. Okay, Tailwind petered out, but that's okay because we do outspeed. Or at least Butterfree outspeeds the Yen Mega. Oh shoot, okay. It can't do anything to my Archon. Yeah, it's just like that. Just like that. With access to Nimbasa City, this is now officially the mid-game, where encounters really open up. But first, nothing like a few rival fights. Back to back is Bianca, then Cherry. Bianca's easy. Sleep Powder the Muna as pre-burned throw instantly kills the Simipore. Then Air Slash one-shots the Servine. Bronzon comes in to tank hits and her Technician Persian dies to throw. Muna then goes down to a 2v1. This battle wasn't too hard since we do have the level advantage. Cherry, on the other hand, is a rotation battle. This is a little bit harder to navigate because any three of the Pokemon can come into the lead to retaliate with a hit. This battle also isn't hard though because I do outlevel his Pokemon, but rotation battles will come up again in the game. Azuril can immediately take out his Kadabra with a crit, so it's one less Pokemon to worry about. Bronzon can also frag out a kill by extra censoring his Duwant. Simiseer takes big damage from Hammer Arm, then dies to Sandstorm Chip. Bronzon finishes off his last two Pokemon. Throughout the next couple of routes, there's a lot of trainers, but for some reason, I found them to be strangely easy. Unlike the games of modern times, I didn't have to plan for every single trainer. It wasn't that I was running into easy trainers, I was just straight up not planning at all. It was honestly a weird feeling having these victories come to me so easily, so I looked into their trainer data. Turns out, unless it's a boss fight, the trainers would only have the simplest AI. On top of that, they don't even have full IVs in every stat. It depends on their trainer class, but on average, IVs only go up to 10 to 15. I honestly didn't know this when I picked up this challenge, but honestly, it made this game too easy. Like, it wasn't even a challenge. So if you are a beginner to Nuzlocking, and you want to get into ROM hacks, then this game is for you. I did make sure to pick up more Pokemon to add to my team. Trapitch from Desert Resort, and Sandal on the second floor of Relic Castle. I can head up to Route 5 where there's a chance for two encounters in the Dark Grass. Hmm. Do I go for the Lax? My gut instinct tells me that it's obviously Snorlax, right? But Braviary's kind of good too. Okay. There's also two more on the right side in Route 16 and Lostlorn Forest. In the grass of 16, I can pick up Pineco, which is okay, but I'm going to be saving the Lostlorn Forest encounter until after I get Surf, because surfing in the water guarantees a Magikarp. Now with the water team pool, the end fight goes by seamlessly. His Hippopotas sets up the sand alongside Maractus. I can rake in two kills, landing Grass Pledge on Hippopotas and Heat Crash into Maractus. Sucker Punch kills his Golette and Acro kills the Larvesta. He sends in Sigilyph and a Gligar. I swap to Azu on the left and Heat Crash crushes the Sigi and Ice Punch crystallizes the win. With Croc Rock and Embor, I can speed through the trainers in the fourth gym. They all had really weak Pokemon like Joltik, Flaffy, and Tynamo, and at least it was no better. No crazy Pokemon, no doubles format, just a straight singles battle against six electric type Pokemon. I lead with our Manitan, who can outspeed and kill Emolga with a Flare Blitz. Ampharos as well goes down to a Flare Blitz. Her Raichu's faster. I swap to Embor who's tankier and hits a Flame Charge to boost my speed. Raichu gets knocked out with a Bulldoze and I can outspeed and kill the rest of Elisa's team. A simple endeavor. Immediately outside of Nimbasa is a rival fight with Charon. I make sure to level up my Pokemon to have the level advantage in this fight. He begins by wasting all of his Whirlwind PP just to lose the Raptor to an Ice Punch. Gigalith gets hard countered by Simisage and Slowbro creams a Simiseer. Slowbro also has a good type matchup against a newly fighting type Samurott and goons the second one. He saves Alakazam for last, but is built as a support Pokemon. Like, honestly, I don't even know what this guy was doing by having such a weird team. On Drifil Drawbridge, I get Spiro, and I fish up Mantike in Drifil City. Neither of them are good Pokemon, and I don't really end up using them at all. That's one of the issues of such an old game. 
Since most of the Pokémon are left unchanged, not every encounter is super viable like in modern ROM hacks. Before barreling through the next gym, the game takes us through Cold Storage. It's a bunch of more fights with Grunts and Ice types, but nothing too interesting. If you have a solid Fighting or Fire type, then you can easily push through the trainers. What's more interesting is that I finally got a good encounter in the Cold Storage Dark Grass. The answer is obvious, right? We're, don't, we're definitely going Sneasel, because there's no way I'm taking Vanilla, <laughs> unless they Giga buffed it. Unfortunately, no Technician, but Ice Punch was boosted to 80 base power, which is helpful. With the newly added Ice type on my team, icing through all of Clay's lackeys was another menial task. It's almost like Cold Storage was perfectly positioned to giving an advantageous encounter for Clay. Surprisingly, unlike the rest of the Plebeian Gym Leaders, Clay was the first to pose a challenge. I have to lead the fight with Slowbro. Thankfully, we are slower, which gets the drizzle up. I brine for the kill, but leaves Hippo on 1 HP. I uh, did not see that then. I guess we don't kill. I don't know why you would Stone Edge over Earthquake, but... Okay. Okay, Crocodile, gonna go for a Crunch. Okay. He looks for a Crunch, kill. so I swap into Weavile. Ice Punch kills and brings in Marowak. Beautiful. Crit did not matter, we had never melt Ice. Marowak here is an issue because the Thick Club seriously boosts his damage. The plan here is Butterfree. Excadrill, of course. I swap over to Throw, who's better at tanking hits, and retaliates with a boosted revenge. No! Okay. I thought Quick Claw would let us. Go for, I don't know. You know what? I don't care. Doubles the damage. I'll take it. I don't care. This brings in the biggest issue on his team, Steelix. I swap over to Dugong to tank hits, stalling out the Steelix with rest hydrations till an opportunity comes in to hit with a brine. You lose. You lose. You should have attacked me. At least then you would have a chance to crit, but nope. We crit. Finally, the last Pokemon is Seismitoad. An easy swap to Simi lands a Grass Pledge to earn the Quake Badge. Jesus. Easy. Too easy. Too easy. Following the pattern of the rivals, after Gym Badge is a rival fight. I still make sure to hold my level advantage, but Bianca finally has some fully evolved Pokemon for once. <laughs> you coiled and you have contrary, you stupid idiot! <laughs> what are you doing? Clay meets up at the entrance of Chargestone Cave and clears away the web. I know that I'll have to deal with a long set of plasma grunts, so I make sure to bring in strong ground and fighting Pokemon. Delaying your encounter until the lowest floor here is the best idea because it has the best set of encounters. Unfortunately, I get the worst of the set. And not even electric type. Slang. Uh, I don't know about that. I don't think Clang is the right one. <laughs> Out of all the electric types we could have gotten, we got the non-electric type. I also know that N is waiting for me at the end of the cave with a full Rotom team. Leading with Weavile, a simple Night Slash removes the regular Rotom from the picture. Rotom Heat wants the Lava Plume, so I swap to Embor who can resist the hit, and hit back with a super strong Heat Crash due to our large weight difference. Simi Sage pivots in to resist the Wash's Scald and one-shots with Grass Pledge. I bait Hurricanes into Archeops, which thankfully doesn't confuse or bring us into Defeatist. Unfortunately, I did not see the speed boost in the Calcs. Wow, the Calcs do not say speed boost. Okay, we're in a bit of trouble now. I have to trust an Embor here to live a crit to kill with Heat Crash. We have to live this. Okay, and no confusion too, so that was pretty lucky. Rotom Mo comes out next, and I have to swap out to Darmanitan since Embor's health is too low. Flare Blitz one-shots with a Rotom Mo and Rotom Frost in the back to give me the win. Now with access to Mistralton City, I can head up a bit to pick up a few more encounters. Odd No on Route 7, and Why Not in Celestial Tower. Usually Why Not and Wobbuffet are strong Nuzlocke Pokemon because they can reliably revenge kill any Pokemon, but in this game where most of the AI is basically random, I can't really use Wobbuffet like I usually can. After bringing Skylar back down to her gym, I can head into Plow Her. Her team is a full set of 6 strong flyers, fighting in a triple battle. This battle is inherently very hard. Flying attacks can reach all sides of the field, and they tend to be fast and offensive. And this fits the aggressive nature of triple battles very well. My plan was to leave Butterfree on the left. As a bug type, all three of her Pokemon should see Brave Bird as a kill. This way, Butterfree can protect, and Rockside from Arceus can chip all three of her Pokemon. Okay, it doesn't 
doesn't really matter what any of these guys do, because we're always faster. Okay. It's fine. See the Brave Bird? Rock Slide? Okay, as expected. Okay, that's why we have Citrus. And Skarmory flinched. Okay. Okay. I just need the Goliath Squirt to come out on the middle or right side. Just not the left side. Fuck. Are you serious? Oh, okay. That, that, this is, okay. This is the worst possibility. So actually here, this is what we do. We'll, we'll still swap. We'll swap to Bronzong on the left. Rock slide them all. And Ice Punch kills the Archaeops. This way we don't have to worry about the uh, Earthquake. This is a kill. Okay, Gliscore avoided. That's fuck. Oh. Uh, oh my god. I was about to say. <laughs> I think we lose Archaeops if we did not flinch there. Ice Punch knocks out Swana and Gliscore okay. Thunderfangs into my Motor Drive Clink Clank. Save. Now I can shift Weavile to the center and Ice Punch Gliscore to ice it out. Alright. Alright. Like always, following the defeat of a gym leader, this time it's a rotation battle with Charon. Upon victory against Charon, Alder gives us the HM for Surf, and we can get access to a huge amount of encounters. The encounter I saved in Lost Lord Forest grants me the Magikarp I've been saving for. Oh fuck, it's a really high level. <laughs> and it's not Intimidate, so it, that means it has Moxie. Mistralton Cave and Gunnan's Chamber has two chances of giving me a super powerful Pokemon. Specifically, a fast Dragon Pokemon that can sweep Drayden. My usual pick for this job is Swift Swim Kingdra. On the bottom floor, I get Beldum. A great Pokemon certainly, but that's not gonna do it. It's a good Pokemon, but it doesn't work for what we need. Okay, we'll have to try again. Okay, Zwylis. I'm thinking about it, and I don't think it's fast enough. In P2 Laboratory, by picking up Tentacruel as a dupe, I can guarantee myself Horsey on Route 18. Yes! There it is. You know what? 13 speed. That is good enough, I think. We'll take this. We will take this. Going forward, Donphan joins the party in Twist Mountain, and Dratini is guaranteed from the waters of Dragon Spiral Tower. The season is currently wintertime, which means that the pond encounters for the next few eras are off limits. There is a way to change the season to optimize your encounters, but I'm too lazy. Plus, I'm speeding through the game already, so I just decided to roll with whatever came my way. So Barboach, Stunfisk, and Seismitoad join the team. With so many more Pokemon available in the box, I can head into the seventh gym. Icerus City is my favorite back in Pokemon Black and White, and the gym had my favorite puzzle. It was a shame that they put it behind the post game in Black and White too. With the newly added Metagross and the Hatchlar Vesta Egg, I can blast through the gym trainers. Volcarona especially is very good, having been changed to have the Drought ability. Cryo? Damn, you can even blast past Cryo? My box is in great shape to take on Bryson's double battle. His team revolves around the Hail concealing his Snowcloak Glaceon, allowing it to blast powerful attacks. I do bring in my Volcarona despite it being faster. By having Butterfree bait blizzards, Volcarona doesn't need to worry about attacks. Equipping a Charcoal increases its fire damage, and I can kill both of his lead Pokemon with Heat Wave. That's fine, Heat Wave with Charcoal should kill. Beautiful. With Bear Tech and Vanillix out, Volcarona can't guarantee a kill on both of them. I swap out to Metagross on the right, and bring in Slowbro on the left to remove the hail. And we'll go Slowbro on the left to remove the uh, hail. Okay. That's fine. Jesus frick, what the hell? What was that? With Slowbro so low, Vanilla sees Shadow Ball as a kill, so I can safely protect Slowbro as Meter Mash does massive damage to faint the Bear Tick. With Drizzle setting up the rain, there's no need to worry about Snow Cloaks on Bear Tick or the incoming Frostlass. I commit to another double swap into Snorlax and Butterfree. Again, Butterfree's baiting attacks, and Snorlax is here to fire off super effective heavy slams. No, 
please. Oh shit. Okay, let me think. Let me. Th I swap again to Volcarona on the right side, and this time Darmanite on the left. Even though Blizzard is a resistant move, we don't exactly have the strongest defensive profile, and so we have to tank two of them. Thankfully, we don't get double penetrated by unlucky crits, and Flare Blitz finishes off the last cryo. Hopefully, it shadow balls into my left. Blizzard? I don't know why you Blizzard. I don't know why you Blizzard. Alright, saved ourselves. Bang. Oh my god. Got kind of scary. Got kind of scary. Heatwave picks up the double kill, and but with the seven badge easy. earned, we've passed over that's one of Blaze Black's trickiest trainers. Easy money. Right after Bryson, the game throws us into a long split of aim mashing through Plasma Grunts, Dragon Spiral Tower, Relic Castle, nothing that requires too much attention. Unlike Bianca, who has a nasty triple battle in the permanent hail. Weavile is fastest on the field and leads with a taunt to prevent screen setup. Hydreigon protects in the middle, and Metagross secures Zen Headbutt kill on Mian Shao. I swap to Simi Sage on the left despite Chandler wanting to flamethrower, since Hydreigon can Dark Pulse to kill first. Weavile also taunts the Persian in hopes of preventing Hypnosis. In this position, Shadow Balls should be hitting my Simi Sage slot, but instead, Energy Ball goes for Weavile. Since my Dark Types are all at risk, I double swap for Archeops and Metagross. With Simi Sage already out, we can immediately kill Simi Pool without having to take a hit. Simi Sage here is no longer useful, so I safely swap to Weavile on the left since Archeops can protect itself from attacks. Gyarados comes in on the right, and Weavile can tally another kill with Ice Punch. Archeops U turns out, and next turn, Mushana goes down to a Night Slash. This leaves Persian to get double penetrated by Waterfall for the week. That, that was, uh, okay, that's, that's the hardest battle we've had to encounter so far. And it wasn't that bad. I planned horribly, but we still got it out of it alive, so. The best Route 9 encounter is probably Gothitelle in preparation for the Elite Four, but now we're on to Drayden. Remember that Kingdra I was talking about? Well, turns out it doesn't really work. The plan that I had in mind was to outspeed all of their Pokemon with Swift Swim and blast super effective Dragon Pulse. Unfortunately, both the Life Orb and Choice items are locked behind the post game, so Kingdra doesn't do enough damage. I still try my hand at the Kingdra strat, leading with Dragon Fang to boost my Dragon Pulse damage. Leading with Slowbro, Drizzle sets out the rain for the speed boost I need. I swap over to Fortress because I need a layer of spikes to break a Focus Sash. Spikes? Shit. <laughs> Fuck. Oh, thank god it belly dropped. Thank god it belly dropped. I rotate over to Kingdra since there's a fire moving cut. That's fine. Fire Blast is okay. Uh, there's... Oh my god. Now we're on a timer. I go for another Dragon Pulse looking for a kill, but Charizard lives on 1 HP. Okay. I think my math was wrong. Very wrong. Shit. Okay. Uh, wow. I think I must have miscalculated somewhere. Luckily, I made sure to bring up a backup plan. Gyarados can set up a Dragon Dance and Waterfall Flygon to kill. Alright, that's fine. That's okay. Moxie ensures that our attack can only go up, and Ice Fang ensures our type advantage against its Dragon types. Alright. Beautiful. Alright, so I guess we just lost Kingdra because I miscalculated, but that's fine. That's fine. That's fine. I doubt we're going to be able to use Kingdra much in the Elite Four, but sure. Honestly, Gyarados should have been my first plan, so I kind of just Kingdra? lost Kingdra for no reason. You know the rule. Gym leader done. Rival battle fun. Victory Road is finally where the trainers start posing a challenge. They now have teams of four, five, six Pokemon, and they're not all easy fights. But after all the A-mashing, we reach the Elite Four. Like most games, the Elite Four is the hardest part of the game. It's meant to be the final stand before you and the champion, and it's supposed to wear down your team to test your nuzlocking skills. In Blaze Black, the Elite Four consists of four double battles, each with their own issues. Ordinarily, Dark types do really well, being super effective into both Chantel and Caitlyn, and resisting Grim Sleep. This makes Pokemon like Hydreigon and Moxie Crocodile obvious picks. Bug types also aren't a bad choice. Having access to support moves and a type advantage against Grimsley and Caitlyn seems like a decent choice. So come to my surprise, when going into Chantel, I'm leading with Slowbro and Gyarados. I honestly have no clue what they're going to do first turn. I'm probably just going to fucking Ice Beam this side, and then Dragon Dance to scout the first turn. 
because I have no idea what they're going to do. Okay, Hurricane is really weird. That's a crit. Not even. Oh my god. I have no idea why it Hurricane. With Gyarados danced up and Weavile on the left, Gyarados can crunch the tankier Pokemon and Weavile can take care of the leftovers. Yeah, that first turn was really, really weird. I don't know, it should have been ghost moves. In theory, we should be able to kill whatever comes out. Alright, Gyarados is now ready to sweep. Night Slash to Frost Lass, Crunch to Miss Magius. Yep, that's good. Beautiful. Beautiful. That's what I thought. Okay. Nicely done. Nicely done. Against Grimsley, the plan is very similar to Chantel. Quiver Dancing Flygon allows us to keep up with Sharpedo's speed boost. Flygon Bug Buzzes anything too fast, and Volcarona packs a harder punch for any of the tanker Pokemon. Okay, so Charm is probably best case scenario. It literally does not matter. But okay, it, it also means no protect from the Sharpedo though. So it probably goes for, what, Waterfall or Hydro Pump? It probably went for a Hydro Pump into my Volcarona. Or no, 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 Crunch, Crunch. It went Crunch. Into Flygon. That's fine. Flamethrower can, bur can kill the... Uh... That's completely fine. That's fine. That means Flamethrower does kill the Haunch Crow then. It didn't go for Sucker Punch. It is a kill on my... What's it called? Flygon, but, it's not, but it didn't see it though. That means this is a kill. Okay, nice. What can the Houndoom do? The Houndoom actually has a Focus Sash, so it will live a hit. Okay, I went for the Sucker Punch into Flygon. We can't Flamethrower the Bisharp because the rain is out right now. Let's go, unless I wanted to go Gyarados instead. I should have done that first then, but there's no way of knowing. Uh, let's go Gyarados right. Okay. I'm not playing this too, too well. I mean, if I'm being honest. Fake out Bisharp. Waterfall kill the Absol. Yeah, that works. Okay, this works. Okay, we win. We win. Whew. Okay, we cannot... It, it got kind of tight there. We cannot lose Weavile. I... Caitlyn, I think, should go a little bit easier. Just because her Pokemon are a little bit more frail. Sigilyph only dies to... Uh, Ice Punch from Musharna. Uh, from Weavile. So we can do that. And Bug Buzz kills Musharna. This is safe. The next two Pokemon is going to be a little bit tricky to deal with. It's probably Bronzong, and then it's either Bronzong Gothitelle or Bronzong Reuniclus. Depending on which one it is, if it's Reuniclus, that did not... What? I mean, the issue right now isn't them doing damage. It's more that the Musharna can set up a bunch of stuff. Okay, that's fine. Uh, it depends what the Reuniclus does. Okay, okay. Okay, it's good that Volcarona is actually slower th in, uh, than we Weavile, because then it's faster in Trick Room, which likely kills the Musharna, and then the stronger Night Slash goes into the Reuniclus. But that was unlucky of them for them to miss a Thunder. That was just unlucky. But having Trick Room up right now is not helpful, and I probably want to kill the Reuniclus with Bug Buzz. I don't have Protect on enough Pokemon to wait out the Trick Room either. 
So we're really just brute forcing through it. Shit, and I set the thunder for them. Okay. This also means I can't kill the Bronzong with Flamethrower now because I don't have the rain, uh, the sun set up. I mean, I mean the Bronzong can't really do anything to Volcarona, right? It's just the Heem, right? Okay, protect. Show me Thunderbolt. <laughs> okay, rested. Uh, Psychic. Oh, shit. Mm. That's interesting. Flygon on, on the left. Protect Gyarados. And then, uh, I mean, if, if Trick Room runs out, that's good. But if not, we'll make one more swap and then hope... Okay, what are you doing? Why are you just resting? Okay, Trick Room ended. I mean, here's what we can do. Bug Buzz. Crunch kills. I think there's just Gothitelle in the back, right? Oh my fucking god. I mean, Bug Buzz might kill the Gothitelle, and it also has Thunderbolt, which probably baits it into the Protect from Gyarados. Hopefully this kills the Gothitelle. I have no idea what that was. You're dead. Oh my god. Dude, I don't know why you... S Thunderbolt is a kill into the... Th okay, well, you know what? The AI sometimes does its own thing. I I'm not even sure if we need it for Marshall, but thank god it lived. Marshall was the only one that needed some crafty right. play. So, one of the issues, a lot of sturdies and focus sash. Faking out slot breaks okay. it steady. Giving Archeops a free turn to acrobatics and to throw. Protecting Weavile gives another free turn to take out the Minxiao. Now. Okay. Because then uh, U-turn from Flygon can kill on, can pick up the kill. Nice. Okay, show me Stone Edge. Perfect. Phew. That was a crit. Uh, okay. So here's where Archeops is now at risk. Uh, let's go to Slowbro on the left. fine. Weavall can kill the Breloom. I mean, I guess I... Uh, show me bullets. Okay. In, into the into Weavile. Perfect. I mean, not perfect, but... Bullet seed into Volcarona, perfect. And then we'll go into something- oh my god, yeah, they definitely see the kill into Weavile. And then we'll go into something that can kill either of them. I hope my prediction's correct. I hope I'm doing this prediction correctly. Vacuum wave, okay. No mock punch, shit. Oh, it's gonna take down either Slowbro or Archeops. Drain Punch, that's fine. Okay, we win. Okay. Whew. Wait. Oh, fuck. I'm so stupid. I'm so st Thank God I protected here. I'm so stupid. I'm so dumb. Dude, we got so lucky, this Elite Four. We did not deserve to be this lucky. Holy shit. First with Flygon, and then here. And with Weavile earlier. We did not deserve to be this lucky. Holy fuck. Alright. Final two battles. 
that stand in our way. The first one is relatively easy. This one's pretty much just a Moxie sweep. This is not actually Zekrom. This is actually a, what's it called? A Zoroark. Slowbro sees the Psychic, and it should go for like a Flamethrower. Perfect. You turn out for Chip. We can actually kill this, but we don't want to, because we need to set up with Gyarados. Dragon Dance once. Dragon Dance twice. And I think we sweep from here. Crunch kills. Actually, I should have Earthquaked because there is Flame Body Chance. Okay, that was a mistake there. Beautiful. Easy enough, easy enough. Last battle in front of us. Alright, uh, here we're gonna Earthquake. Ooh, actually, I should have started with a... What's it called? Bulk up, but that's fine. Beautiful. We can sack Pokemon as we go, so we don't need to keep Pokemon if we don't need them here. If we die, we die. That's fine. Yeah, we're, we're, we're definitely dead. <laughs> but that's okay. Throw. We got you at the start. Kind of unexpected, but you did kind of well. You kind of carried your weight. We are going to Spikes. <laughs> okay, you missed. <laughs> we're going to Spikes because we, we want to break Sash on the... Uh, uh, Genesect in the in the back, but I guess we can explode now. <laughs> Unintentional, but yeah, I'll take it. <laughs> Crit. Boom. How much damage do we do? It's not. It's not. A, it's not actually that much. Not too certain. Bug buzz kills. Electros. Uh, we can sack here. There is like one range that kills, but I doubt it. Yeah. That's fine. Volcrona, of course. Super, super good. At this point in the game, I'm a little too eager to sack my Pokemon. I have three Pokemon left in my party with Toxic Spikes up. Well, he has four. Flare Blitz. Not dragon dancing, which is interesting. This should be Dusk Noir. We'll do a bit of chip with Earthquake. That's crit. <laughs> I knew it from the. St I knew it when I saw it. <laughs> Genesect. Boost attack. Perfect. The challenge started with Tepig, and here he is ending the challenge. Bang. And that's it. That's the easiest ROM hack to beat. In the end, I only lost five Pokemon and took maybe a week to play through this game. This ROM hack is by far the easiest game out there. 
It's not an insult, it's just the way the Nuzlocking community has advanced. Hopefully, if you want to start Nuzlocking, you'll give this game a try. And if you want to see more Nuzlocke content, subscribe and stay tuned.